you really can't learn everything there is to know about a certain kind of RV just by researching. You have to actually use one. We've learned twice as much renting a Class C RV as we could have doing all the research in the world. You can't find everything on YouTube. Occasionally, you actually have to do something. So we rented this Class C RV and we're traveling around South Florida and we have learned so much. Some pros and some cons to having a Class C RV. So the first one is this is a 24 foot which is actually the ideal size because when you go to campgrounds or state parks or even into the city you have a better chance of being able to park this one somewhere and we even like to go boondocking so it's nice to be able to take uh, this kind of an rv to a place that is really really beautiful and it's not too difficult to move you can also take naps while the other person is driving, which is really, really nice. It's a nice feature mm -hmm. because sometimes you just get tired on the road and there's those long stretches where it's not mm -hmm. all that scenic and why not catch a nap while you're on the road? Mm -hmm. I would not recommend, however, taking a nap while you're driving. <laughs> no. Uh, another nice feature of this, of course, is having your kitchen on the road with you. We have stopped at rest stops and other places and we can make a quick, healthy lunch and everything's with us because we have a kitchen with a fridge and uh, a freezer and even a stove if we wanted to cook on the road. So that has been super helpful and it also saves you a lot of money. You go to the grocery store, you get some groceries and you fix your own meals. In fact, we've been on the road for a week now, I think, and we've only gone out one time. And we are good to go all sorts of groceries for tonight and the next several days. Well, and having a bathroom right there in your vehicle, you can pull into a rest stop, pull in anywhere. You don't have to use those filthy truck stop bathrooms. You have <laughs> your own bathroom wherever you need it, which mm -hmm. helps you enjoy the trip because you're not always having to go. And you can take a shower. We did one thing which was kind of fun, a little stealthy. We were at South Beach in Miami and we found a nice parking lot and were able to park there for free. And we went swimming in the ocean for a couple hours. And when we came back, we literally both took showers while in the parking lot and nobody had to know. Also, I'm a wide body, I'm a big person. And I don't care what they say. When they say queen or when they say king for an RV, it isn't really what it is. It's a bit smaller, a bit cramped. And it's important to have different sleeping options. Mm -hmm. And here I've had a little fort in that little bubble nose thing above the cab. Mm -hmm. And that's been really, really nice to be able to spread out. And Wendy's mm -hmm. had the so-called queen mattress, mm -hmm. which is not exactly a queen mattress. But no, but it's fabulous for just one person. So let's talk about driving. Driving this has been remarkably easy. We have been on some freeways. We've been on some rough roads. And we have also driven through an unbelievable tropical storm. Now that was more tricky, but for the most part, this thing is very easy to drive. There's plenty of storage. Now we don't know that for sure because we flew here and when you fly here, you just have a couple of suitcases. True. But if we were leaving from home, it might be a little different. We might bring more things, mm, but it seems like there's would. a lot of storage here that is available if mm -hmm. you use your space wisely. Right. Um, I also have run into slight challenges with the storage because a lot of it is overhead. And um, I find myself literally having to climb up on this bench to reach some of it. Now that's great for now. And David can't do it. He's way too tall. So, you know, it's good to have a lot of storage, but you may want to so save perfect. that upper storage for the stuff that you don't use very often. Or for the tall person. <laughs> True. Speaking of tall, I fit in the shower, which shocked me. I've never yes. fit in an RV shower before. Yes. Yeah, generally, to turn around in a shower, I have to get out and turn around and go back in. And this was really quite nice. Yeah. I actually fit in there. The, the shower didn't feel super durable. It's kind of flimsy, 
but uh, it worked and it yeah. worked really, really well. And the reason that he fit in there is because they've created a sort of a dome uh, in the ceiling of the uh, of the shower, which actually goes, I think, a little higher than the regular roof. And that really works. It makes somebody who's six foot two fit in there, which is wonderful. Which I did not expect no. at all. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of good lighting in here. Mm -hmm. There's just lots of lights. In lots fact, and lots of lights. We probably haven't found all the switches. Nope. But it's uh, really, really helpful to have good lighting mm -hmm. and easy to access lighting. Mm -hmm. We are very much into reading. And so we, we need good lighting to be able to read. And that's really nice. And when it's hot and humid and you stop for lunch, you can turn the generator on. There's an mm. internal generator here, mm -hmm. which is actually quieter than most generators I've heard. Some generators are so annoying. Mm -hmm. When you go to a nice, beautiful place and somebody runs their generator for hours and hours on end, it's one of the biggest pet peeves of campers is other people running their generators. Mm -hmm. Well, this generator, I don't think I would use it for hours on end, but if you're stopped in a really hot and a humid day, and you stop for lunch, you can run the generator, run the air conditioner, run the microwave, whatever you need to do. Mm -hmm. And that has been really, really helpful. Just push a button mm -hmm. and you've got all the power you need. Also, we have a two-way fridge here. It can run on propane or on electricity. And for the first time in all of our camping, it stays cold the whole time. We have ice that we bought at the beginning of the trip and there's still a little bit of ice up in the freezer. Mm -hmm. So that has been a real advantage. Well, let's move on to some of the cons. We found out some challenging things too. That's true. One thing is that it's very noisy while driving. When you have a trailer, you don't hear all the banging around back there. <laughs> you occasionally are surprised when you get to mm -hmm. your campsite and you see everything all over the floor mm -hmm. or some cabinets that opened or things mm -hmm. that bang around silverware, but you literally hear all the silverware bouncing around and everything else while you're driving. And it makes it kind of hard to talk sometimes because it's a very noisy ride. When we're on our Yukon, mm -hmm. it's a very quiet ride mm -hmm. with the trailer behind us. Also, speaking of noise, the air conditioner on the roof, I don't know if it's just this one, but it's really noisy. My so oh, noisy. My wife and I had to repeat ourselves over and over and over because <laughs> we had to we shout say. even when we were four feet away mm -hmm. because the air conditioner is so noisy. We had to turn it off to do this video. That's right. If we had not done that, you wouldn't hear a word we're saying. No. <laughs> and up in front in the driver's seats, even with the seats all the way back, it's very cramped, kind of like a coach seat in a plane. Mm -hmm. So the seats don't move back very far mm -hmm. and it's your legs get very tired by the end of the day because you can't really stretch them out, especially if you're six foot two. I know. I'm only five five. And for me, even, it's a little crowded, a little cramped. Okay, so one other thing is we're sitting at a dinette here and while it is really nice to have a table to sit at and to eat your meals, it's also a really good place to collect all your junk because it's the only surface really here to put anything on. So we constantly fill it up and then we have to clear it off in order to be able to eat. So yes, it's nice to have a dinette, uh, but the seats uh, themselves, they're comfortable, definitely, but not huge. And we kind of think maybe if we were to create our own trailer, we will probably have maybe recliners instead of a dinette. Not that there's anything wrong with this dinette, it's in great shape and great condition, but we're not totally sure we want one because we tend to just like pile on the stuff, which is not a good idea. Also, there's really poor visibility when you're changing lanes. No matter how you arrange the mirrors, it's very, very hard. And the reason for that is because our, say our, the front part where we're driving is about this wide, but as you go back, it gets this wide. And so you kind of have to see around the, the width of the trailer, which is very wide. Uh, not the trailer, sorry, the width of the RV, which is very wide. And that takes getting used to, and we have some really good side mirrors on this thing. Really good. But at the same time, it's a little scary when you have to change lanes. Next topic, gas mileage. Oh, yo, yo. Of course. Anything large like this is going to have poor gas mileage. And especially these days, I don't know about where you live, but in California, you probably pay at least $6 a gallon and this is June of 2022, just for reference, and the gas prices seem to just keep going up. 
So you have to keep that in mind. If you're going to be traveling in an RV, gas mileage will probably be poor and your gas costs will be high. One more thing that we've learned is that if we want to go into town or go anywhere at all, we have to leave the campground. We have to unhook everything, which I have to admit is not difficult. Getting this thing ready to move is surprisingly easy. We just unhook everything, you know, the, the water, the electricity, the other stuff, and we're on the road. It doesn't take long at all, but it's still a reality that you have to do it when you go anywhere. You are breaking camp. So yeah. if you want to run into town and get some ice, or if you want to run into a, a village or a, a sightseeing tour real quick, mm -hmm. or you want to go see something, pick something up that you forgot, you got to break camp. Mm -hmm. And that's challenging. That's one of the things we love about a trailer is you can just take the Yukon and head into town, exactly. especially if you're heading into a crowded touristy area. Mm -hmm. I can't imagine, we were in Key West yesterday, and mm -hmm. I cannot imagine driving this through Key West. The oh, yeah. streets are narrow, it's very crowded. True. And it would have been really nice to take the Yukon and just zip into town mm -hmm. with air conditioning and zip back. Mm -hmm. Instead, we took the bus and had quite an adventure, which oh, we'll yeah. tell you about in another video sometime. Yes, we will. One more thing about an RV like this is that you cannot go off-road. You have to have good high clearance and four-wheel drive to go off-road. And one of our favorite things to do is to go off-road and to explore some pretty beautiful and um, sometimes treacherous places. And that's just the reality of an RV like this. Also, you need a level camp spot. Mm -hmm. The big class A's come with levelers and the larger trailers come with levelers. And even our little Scotsman is really easy to level with some jacks and things, but there's no way you can really level this Class C RV. So you have mm -hmm. to find a spot that's very level. And sometimes you don't really know until you get there how that's level true. it's going to be. Yeah. And especially with state parks and other places that are more remote, level is not the top priority when they build these things. So we've been on all kinds of slopes that we've had to kind of fix with our trailer mm -hmm. and make things level. Uh, one that really affects me is making the bed is really difficult. Um, we're using the two options. One is the regular bed and the other is the a bed above the driver compartment. And um, while David is not exactly finicky about making a bed, I do like to get I just pull the a, curtains and it goes away. Yeah, I do like to make my bed and really that First of all, you have to jump up into it, and then you have to just maneuver everything like crazy, and it takes a long time to make the bed, and it never looks that great. So I know that I would switch to a different kind of bedding if it was mine. I'd use a duvet, which is very easy to manipulate and move into place. So um, yeah, we've learned something new by by making the bed here. I think my bottom sheet has come unattached three times and oh, it's wow. really hard to get it back on mm -hmm. because you're in a very, very cramped space. Mm -hmm. So yeah, making the bed, not a priority for me. I just close the curtains, but for Wendy, that's a big deal. That's right. Uh, Let's talk about the AC because yeah. we've had a few issues with that. The air conditioning, uh, we've talked about how loud it is, but it does work well. In fact, it, it gets really very cool in here, which is lovely. But at the same time, um, we've learned that it can start to leak after a while. And we have literally found some of our stuff soaking wet on the floor, which is kind of unfortunate. We've had to dry out uh, my travel bag and my purse at least two or three times. And we've learned don't put anything on the floor in certain spots where the water, water tends to come down. We talked to an RV repairman who said that basically roof air conditioners eventually start leaking. Mm -hmm. And that's a very, very common problem. And it's really hard to fix because up there on the roof, it's a flat roof and mm -hmm. the air conditioner produces water and mm -hmm. that water, especially when it's humid, and that water has to go somewhere and eventually it finds places to go that uh, it wasn't designed to go. So that's right. we find mm -hmm. a lot of leaking with that, although I don't think the rain is a problem here with that, but... Uh, no, it didn't come in when it was pouring rain, which is really good. But if you guys have a solution to the air conditioning situation, if you have a creative idea of how to cool off your RV without having the water leaking into it... And lots of noise. And lots of noise, yes. 
please put it in the comments. Because and also, there's no place to put your feet up. We're mm. at the point in our lives where we love to put our feet up at the end mm -hmm. of the day. Mm -hmm. And you really can't do that here because there's a little dinette. And there's a little lounge chair, but the legs don't go up. And it's about the size of a small grandma to be sitting in it. So it's uh, oh, for someone like me, it's very I fit challenging. In fine. Well, you're little. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I have a hard time sitting there even. And so there's really no place to put your feet up. Mm -hmm. And that's just nice, especially if you go hiking and you spend some time oh, walking. Yeah. We put in 10,000 yeah. steps yesterday, which is pretty typical on the road. Mm -hmm. And it's really nice to to put your feet up and it's really no We'd have to we're finding if we ever get a larger RV that we're going to have to probably custom make it mm -hmm. and so. have that done way ahead of time mm -hmm. and get the things we want because mm -hmm. I don't really want to compromise on that because life goes fast and you're stuck with something. So yeah. my guess is most manufacturers will make it the way you want to as long as you have lots of time. Now, we live in the Southwest and most of our cooking we do outside. In fact, mm -hmm. we spend all of our time outside. We just sleep mm -hmm. inside, basically. And outside is where we live when we're camping in the Southwest. Well, we found in Florida, nobody is outside. They're all inside. It's too it's, hot and humid. It's hot and humid. Everyone's inside their RV. Now, granted, we are here during the hot and humid season. I hear from people who live here that it's not like this all the time. But then again, we want to travel around the whole country. And there are going to be places where we will be outdoors more and places where we'll be indoors more. So basically, I've seen virtually nobody except for some people from Michigan cooking outside mm -hmm. and that means you cook inside now mm -hmm. here's the problem yeah. the smoke detector mm -hmm. you cannot even make toast without the smoke detector going off mm -hmm. now you need a smoke detector you need a carbon monoxide detector especially mm -hmm. when you're dealing with propane um, I had an uncle uncle Harold who passed away because he was in a truck camper and the propane wasn't detected that's pretty serious stuff very. So you want to have that, but you have to basically dismantle it and put a pillow over it before you can cook. <laughs> now that's that's yeah. just not. Yeah. That's no way to run a railroad. There's we have actually disconnected it and put it outside every single time I cook. And then you might forget to put it back up before you go to sleep. Yeah, you don't and want that to do that. That is not a good thing. Uh, Wendy was just watching a video where a, an RV yeah. burst into flames. Well, you need to know so if there's smoke right away before that happens. So you, you need that's a smoke detector. Important but it's right above the cooking space. And the cooking space is not very well vented. Uh, there's a vent yeah. in the a vent in the ceiling. In the ceiling. Mm -hmm. But that's where the smoke detector is. So, <laughs> so <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Kind of a design flaw. If we uh yeah. if we ever had a cooking place, we'd probably put a fan right there where mm -hmm. the cooking area is and maybe put the smoke detector a little bit a farther little bit away farther from the away. Co cooking area. So lastly, um th this sounds like a lot of cons, but actually it's just a really good learning experience for us. We, we really have learned an awful lot and we're really glad that we rented this so that we know things that we didn't know before. And the last one is David has found, because he does all our hookups, uh, that ho hooking up is easier than he expected. I thought it would be hard. And yeah. uh, we've been mostly boondocking and camping mm -hmm. in state parks, so we haven't had hookups. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I thought, oh my goodness, hooking all that stuff up, the yeah. sewer, the water, the electric, the cable, all this stuff, it must be awfully, awfully hard. It's not. <laughs> it's, <laughs> no. It just takes a few minutes to hook everything up. Mm -hmm. But that's our list of pros and cons mm -hmm. of Class C motorhomes. Yeah. So if thanks you want, for coming along. Thanks for coming along, yeah. and uh, let us know in the comments if you also run into these kinds of things, or if you have other pros and cons that we haven't listed. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and uh, once again, we're very, very glad we did this. If you're ever considering getting an RV, I would highly recommend renting one for at least a week so you get a really good experience a thorough experience and learn what it is you like and do not like someday in the future we'll rent a completely different kind so we can learn what that's like maybe a class a maybe a class b who knows but we will rent something completely different and i'm sure we'll learn a ton from that and we'll share that with you as well. Please do subscribe here to the Tin Can Twosome mm -hmm. and uh, hit the like button, hit the notifications bell, mm -hmm. and share this with other people with mm -hmm. whom you love to camp and other people you know that love to get out and see the great outdoors. Yes, thanks for joining us. We love you all, and we will see you on the next ride. Bye.